In this tutorial, I'll show you how to write a Fourier series for any period. Now in one of our previous videos, we looked at how to write a Fourier series for when the period is 2 pi. What's interesting is that a Fourier waveform with a period of 2L, this is just a general form, has the following formula, and this is modified from what we saw in the previous video. Notice that these parts of the trigonometric functions are modified with an L. In addition, a sub zero, a sub n, and b sub n are modified to look like this. The question here asks, write the Fourier series for the waveform in the figure shown below. So we want to come up with an equation that represents the following. Let's go ahead and do this. In step number one, we have to begin by determining if the waveform is odd or even. And if you're unfamiliar with what these words are, an odd function have Fourier series with only sine terms, and you can determine if a waveform is odd if it's symmetrical about the origin, or both the x and the y axis. Take for example this wave. It starts here and it ends here. And let's just take half of this wave. If I were to reflect half of this wave about the x-axis, it would look like this. And if I were to reflect it about the y, it would superimpose this part. This suggests that our waveform is odd. And as mentioned earlier, when your function is odd, you have a Fourier series with only sine terms and no constant term. With that being said, going back to what was represented as the general formula for a Fourier series, everything that you see in red is no longer applicable to the waveform. So our Fourier series will begin to shape up like this. And notice that I've canceled these two out because all the a sub zero and a sub n terms are gone. This is what we're going to work with. In step number two, once we have our general equation for y, or f of x, we need to determine the value of L, and here's how to do that. Remember, the period is represented as 2L, and here's our waveform. It starts here and ends here, for example. That's a span of 12 units. So our period is 12. Therefore, L is equal to 6. So if you go back to these, we now can replace all of these L's with 6. In addition, we now know our lower and upper bound. This is what you should have, where b sub n, the general formula, the L gets replaced with 6, the lower and upper bounds are negative 6 and 6, and this number is also a 6. In step number 3, we need to define our function f of x for b sub n. So take a look at this general formula. That's f of x. We still don't know what that is. So let's go back and look at this wave. From negative 6 to 6, from here to here, our wave is a straight line passing through the origin. And a straight line can be represented as y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Since it's passing through the origin, b is 0. And our slope, using rise over run, this rises from negative 1 all the way to positive one, that's two units, and it runs 12. Two over 12 is one over six, and so f of x for b sub n, this part which was missing, is now one over six x. So we found b sub n, and we're going to use this to find the coefficients for each of the terms. Now the hard part comes in step number four, because in step number four, we actually have to integrate this part. And to integrate this function, you need to use integration by parts. Now, if you recall, integration by parts requires that you set a u and a dv. So we're not going to go through the whole process, but I'm going to show you what to set as your u and your dv. And then from there, you can refer back to one of our previous videos where we actually learned how to integrate by parts. But I'll fast forward all of that and show you what the function is. So just to be clear, this would be represented as your u, x over 6. And this part would be represented as dv sine n pi x over 6 dx. 
you'd find the derivative here implicitly and you would integrate this function and you would use it, the integration by parts technique. Now if you do it correctly, you should end up with a following function. Notice we take the integral of our function and this is the integral of that function after using integration by parts and it has an upper and lower bound and if you substitute the upper bound and lower bound you should end up with the following function. Now let's go back and take a look at our general formula to find b sub 1 this coefficient we need to set n is equal to 1 to find this we set n is equal to 2, 3, and we'll go to four terms for good measure. So going back to this, when we set n equal to 1, I'll show you what happens when n is equal to 1, and you can do the other four. So if I set n here equal to 1, I'll end up with sine pi, and sine pi is equal to 0, so this whole thing goes to 0. Setting n is equal to 1 over here, I end up with 1 over pi squared. 1 over pi squared. We said this was 0. What about this one? n is equal to 1 here, makes this minus 6 pi times 1. Cosine pi times 1 is cosine pi, and cosine pi is equal to negative 1. So this part becomes negative 1. We multiply it to negative 6 pi. This becomes positive 6 pi. Once again, setting this one equal to 1, we end up with negative pi as our angle. That makes this whole thing 0. And setting this equal to 1, I end up with negative 6 pi and cosine times negative pi this time is equal to negative 1. And multiplying that by negative 6, we get positive 6. Therefore, 6 pi plus 6 pi times this factor gives us 12 pi over pi squared, and this reduces down to 12 over pi. Now don't forget that b sub n also had a factor of 1 over 6. So if I multiply this by a factor of 1 over 6, I end up with 2 over pi. So we just found out what b sub 1 is, it's 2 over pi. Notice the amount of work required just to find a coefficient. So without going through all of the work to find b sub 2, sub 3, sub 4, sub 5, this is what they should be. And now let's input these into our general formula. Once again, here it is on your screen. So b sub 1 will be replaced with 2 over pi, f of x is equal to sine pi x over 6. b sub 2 is right here. That's negative 1 over pi sine 2 pi x over 6, and that reduces down to a third, plus 2 over 3 pi sine 3 pi x over 6, that reduces to half. And you continue this with b sub 4, b sub 5, and if you end up graphing those five terms, you will end up with the waveform that was shown at the beginning. Now, of course, the more terms that you add, the more it will start to look like this waveform. And there you have it. That is how to write a Fourier series for any period.